What is integrity? Many people use the word, but not many understand what this important trait truly means. To illustrate this concept, let's go back to a story from 19th century England. One day, a farmer was walking in his fields and saw a party of huntsmen riding through his land. He became worried that they would ride through the area and cause a great deal of harm to the crops growing in his field. He called one of his servant boys and instructed him to close the gate to the field and keep a steady watch and that under no circumstances should he allow the huntsmen to go inside. The boy did as he was told. Soon, one of the huntsmen arrived and requested access to the field so that he could take a shortcut to the forest beyond. However, the boy refused, saying, No, sir. My master told me to keep it shut. The huntsman continued to try and persuade him to open the door, but the boy refused. Soon, even more huntsmen appeared. As a group, they pressured the boy to let them through. They told him, in no uncertain terms, that he must open the gate. However, the boy was resolute and told them again, My master told me to keep it shut. At that moment, a noble-looking rider came galloping up to the gate. He called on the boy to open the gate and let them through. He told him that this was nonsense and the boy must open, but the boy refused. One of the huntsmen asked the boy, Do you know who you are talking to? It is the Duke of Wellington. To this, the boy responded, I still cannot help it, sir. My master told me to keep the gate shut. On hearing this response, the Duke of Wellington exclaimed, I honor the man who can be neither bribed nor frightened into doing wrong. With an army of such soldiers, I could not only conquer the French, but the world. It was said that the Duke never forgot the boy's resolute adherence to his master's instruction, and later paid for the lad to be educated in one of the land's finest universities. Elder Joseph B. Worthlin wants to find integrity as always doing what is right and good, regardless of the immediate consequences. It means being righteous from the very depth of our soul, not only in our actions, but more importantly, in our thoughts and in our hearts. Personal integrity implies such trustworthiness and incorruptibility that we are incapable of being false to a trust or covenant. Integrity is consistency. C.S. Lewis described it as doing what is right even when no one else is watching. Integrity is derived from the Latin word integer which is a whole number that does not contain fractions or decimals. Hence, integrity is the state of quality of being complete, undivided, and unbroken. But why are integers so important? As an example, if a group of individuals were asked to find four apples, they would have little trouble doing so. However, if they were asked to find 1.718 apples, each individual would likely return different results than the others. This example helps us to see that integrity is complete in action and helps us to be both truthful and accurate. One who acts with integrity is not fractured or fragmented in their character. One cannot have fractional integrity. Partial honesty or partial obedience to one's moral convictions is in fact the antithesis of integrity. Elder Douglas L. Collister spoke on this concept when he stated, it is my experience that people most often find themselves in trouble when they possess a dual morality. Such a person may appear to act one way, but then reverse his set of ethics when the moment is convenient or temptation is present. Such duplicity only leads to sorrow and misery. At all times, be sure that there is only one of you. Otherwise, you will find in your personal life that a house divided against itself is destined to fall. Now that we understand what integrity is, why is it so important for a leader to possess it? I, believed in, I believe in principled leadership. I think that leaders ought to have principles, and not just any principles, but good, good principles. And I believe that um, there's, uh, there is actually right and wrong. And I think that integrity definitely falls on the side of, of things that are right. And... Um, with, with integrity, you end, as a leader, you end up engendering trust uh, amongst the core people that you're either managing or leading, right? Uh, with, without integrity, that trust uh, in, in the leader, it, it doesn't necessarily exist. I've had situations where I've had leaders who haven't been 100% full of integrity. And so um, 
they are, I would view them as less reliable, less trustworthy. I'm, I'm not as willing to be as loyal to them as I would be to somebody who actually is full of integrity. So I think, I think integrity is one of those principles that is at the foundation of what it takes to be a great, a great leader. Uh, somebody who is not a leader who's not full of integrity, I think really has self-interest at, at the heart of, of, of him or her. In other words, I think when it comes to crunch time, I'm not convinced that that leader will look out for the, in the, be, for the best interest of the group or the organization that he or she is leading. Instead, he or she will do what's in his or her best interest as opposed to what's needed for the, for the group. And so when, once, once I sense a leader lacks integrity, I'm not as devoted to that leader. I'm not as loyal. They're not as reliable to me. And so I think that really, it really um, weakens them from a leadership perspective. Integrity fosters trust. A leader with integrity is followed because he is trusted. God is the ultimate example of this type of leadership. When he sent us to earth, we didn't know exactly what to expect or what type of hardships we would face, but we followed his plan because we trusted him. Although we can't remember our pre-mortal life, as we strive to understand who he is, we can learn to trust him. We can have assurance that he will care for us and that he will keep his promises if we follow him. We can lead with this same trust if we act with integrity. Even if we don't have the best leadership skills, when we act consistently, those we lead will know that we can be trusted to always do what is right, no matter the consequence. As a leader, integrity will become an asset. It defines who we are and how we should act. Because of our integrity, the question will not be what to do, but will instead be how to do what we know to be right. Once the difficult decisions have been made, we will have peace within ourselves, knowing that we have stayed true to our principles. So, how can one develop integrity? Integrity is principle-based. Personal principles are the foundation of one's own integrity. We must first learn principles of integrity, and then practice them. It is by staying true to our principles that our integrity is defined. As we strive to live by them, we can learn from our failures and build upon our successes. Every time we are obedient to our morals, we gain momentum and courage to continue doing what we know is right. Developing integrity is truly a lifetime pursuit. Like the boy who kept the gate shut, we too can have integrity and we can live by good principles to guide our lives. As we lead with integrity, we will create trust and consistency. Regardless of the outcome, we will have peace within ourselves because we have stayed true to what defines us.